Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Hamilton in my art room and we're gonna be doing one more sweet piece of art for this week. And that is cylinder cakes. We're gonna be using a basic three-dimensional form called a cylinder to make a three-dimensional cake. Shapes are considered flat, forms are considered three-dimensional. That's why it's such a great shape to use for this. Uh, we're going to also review over some other decorating ideas and also what you could do in your background with patterns as well as working with color. Um, it's going to be a really fun time creating this piece of art. Uh, this piece of art was actually inspired by a well-known pop artist from the 50s and 60s whose name is Wayne Tebow. Pop art is an art style that is a lot of artists base their art on popular culture. Um, Wayne especially was inspired by common objects like lipsticks, gumball machines. He also painted ice cream cones and cakes and pies. He was actually best known for his cakes and pies. Uh, he was an amazing artist and I highly recommend that you look him up. I will be adding a link below. Um, there was this great uh, interview of Wayne Tebow. He created amazing landscapes, but the video also talks about his history and how he became a well-known artist. It was a very hard journey for him. So I hope you get a chance to check out that video. And I'll also be adding additional links to some uh, drawing guides that might help you with this art today. Um, so we're going to flip the camera and get started and I will see you in just a moment. All right. Bye. All right, we are gonna start our creating our three-dimensional cakes uh, using a cylinder form. A uh, couple things, I this is our the example, of course. I will come back and I'll probably bring it back into the video to show you and give you some tips about the color. I'm gonna put this to the side for a couple minutes. I'll also link in the details below this sheet, um, or it's a guide sheet of all kinds of frosting, designs and ideas that you can use when we're doing our design, which I'll bring this back out as well. And I also will attach uh, this black and white cake sheet. However, you could easily search for cake designs or cakes online if you'd like, but I'll go ahead and attach this as well to the details below just in case. All right. The first thing you're going to need, things that you're going to need is the materials. You are going to need white sheet of paper, pencil, and then later on, you're going to need black crayons or a black crayon to trace um, because I am going to be doing a painting today. Uh, some additional crayon colors for the crayon resist when we get to color and design. And then some watercolor paint, whatever water paint you have on hand. If you don't have watercolor paint, um, you can use colored pencils, markers, crayons, anything you like to color in your design. It's up to you, but I'm going to be painting today. And because I'm going to be painting uh, a cup of water and of course a paintbrush. All right. First, I'm going to start with pencil and I'll put the crayon to the side because I will be using that shortly after we get drawing. Um, I'm going to take you through uh, the steps of making just a one layer cake. Um, and then later on, real quickly, I'll show you how to do multi-layer cakes. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to be starting by uh, using shapes and lines to create a form. A form uh, something that is three-dimensional. That means we can see multiple sides, and oftentimes a form is solid, and if we were working with light and shadow, it would block the light and create a cast shadow, making it look even more three-dimensional. The main form that we're going to be using to create our cakes today is going to be a cylinder. I talk about forms all the time, um, oftentimes when we are learning about three-dimensional shapes. And one of the things I always say about any type of form is forms are created by starting with a basic shape. And for a cylinder, the shape that we're going to be using is an oval. We're going to be using a squished oval. Now I'm going to draw nice and big because I want to fill up my space. And remember, empty space is boring space. So let's fill up that space because we're focusing on just one particular cake. All right. And we're going to do an oval shape. And because we're going to be drawing a nice big oval, you want to draw with your arm. And also I like to oftentimes sort of, uh, go over my paper a little bit, not putting my pencil down yet, just to see how wide I want to get. And I want to make this a wide oval 
because this will be the top of our cake. If you're going to put something, um, any kind of decoration on top, you might want to leave a little extra space. Um, and then once I have a good idea of where that oval is going to go, I'm going to take it nice and slow. Now remember, we draw light until we get it right. I'm going to draw very lightly where I'm going to generally place this oval, and you can see. If you mess it up, go ahead and dress up your drawing. Um, I often say to my students when we are drawing things, especially with pencil, don't just go and erase it right away. Oftentimes when you just erase right away, you do the same mistake again. So instead, if you make a little mistake, maybe it's a little crooked, maybe you're too far on one side, just go ahead and dress up your drawing meaning fix it first and then do a little bit of erasing because you won't have to erase so much and you won't have to do the whole thing again, saving yourself some time. And also you won't make the same mistake. I'm going to draw a little bit harder so you can see my drawing on camera. Just making, but I would like you, I would suggest drawing much lighter just in case. All right, the next thing, so this is going to be the top of our cake. So we're going to bring down the sides of our cylinder so I'm going to come down and I want to leave space for a plate. All right. So we're making two vertical lines. Now be careful. I see a lot of students who like to come a little inward too much. Make sure you're going right to the very, very edge of that oval. Almost, you're almost going to go off a bit, but not quite. And you're going to bring it straight down. Remember, draw a light until you get it right because we're doing these nice, long, straight lines. Remember, keep your finger stiff and use your arm to draw. All right, and remember, if you mess it up, just dress it up. All right, next thing we're gonna do, you want both of these line, vertical lines to be the same length. And even if they're not, that's okay, we can erase later. All right, we're gonna close the bottom. Now, uh, the bottom of our cylinder is also an oval, but we're just gonna show the bottom edge of that oval, okay? We do not wanna draw straight lines because round objects do not have straight bottoms. They have curved bottoms. So instead, we want to curve that bottom. It, uh, it matches our top curve as well, is a little key tip. All right, I'm gonna erase this because uh, that was just to show you as an example how it looks a little odd. Does it look so round when you draw the bottom of a cylinder straight? All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the plate, and the plate is just another oval. So this plate is going to be overlapping under the cake, so part of the plate is going to go behind the cake, and part of the plate is going to go in front of the cake. So I oftentimes like to, so I make sure that where it comes out and goes behind is even. I'll make two little marks right across from each other, and then I'll go from one mark, curve out, down, around, and stop. And I look for that curve. Take it nice and slow. Down, around, and back up, and stop. Just like that. And if you were to imagine that the back would be going behind. I'm just making a dotted line to give you a general idea of what I am describing. But because it is, our cake is solid and not see-through, we would not see the, the back of the plate. I'm also gonna make this plate three-dimensional. Instead of it being such a tall cylinder, I'm gonna make it a very thin, skinny cylinder. So just like I did with my cake, I'm gonna bring down the sides, but I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the very edge of my oval, very side edge, and I'm gonna bring down just a little bit of a line on both sides equal length, and then we're going to make a curved bottom matching our top curve. So I'm gonna curve it, and remember, draw a light till you get it right, take it nice and slow, and try and use your arm to draw, not so much your hand. There we go. And yes, I accidentally got my cake over to one side a little bit. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it because I wanna keep going, but normally I would just maybe scooch this side over a little bit just so it's a little more centered. It might be a little bit of a thinner cake, that would be fine, but I'm going to leave it as is for now. All right, so now we have our plate, we have our cake, and it's ready. It's time for decorating. But before I decorate, I'm just going to real quickly, I'm going to add a horizon line just so I've got that in there. So it feels like it's on a table surface. So we've got a wall and we've got a table. All right, for decorating, 
We've got lots of inspiration here. So lots of different cakes. And I know there's a cake that is cut open. I'll even be showing you an example of how to do that as well. Okay. We've got some with cherries and strawberries and whipped cream and then some with shapes on the side of it. And this is what I was saying about multiple layer cake compared to these right here, which is like a single, single cake. And these are mini cakes stacked on top of each other. We'll talk about that and we'll be creating something similar in a bit. And, and then I've got your frosting guide sheet with lots of different ideas. And what I did on here is I did sort of frosting on the bottom edge, frosting around the top edge, and a little strawberry with some frosting on the top. I kept this one very, very simple. So I think for my example, I might do something a little, a little more, more to it. So I really like this with the drizzle, and I really like sort of where you can see all the different layers. That might be kind of fun too. So I'm going to probably do something a little bit like that. I'm going to put this to the side. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the drizzled chocolate layer. So I'm going to start on one side. You can do something totally different. You do not have to do what I'm doing, but if you'd like to, to do what I'm doing as the, for the example, that's fine as well. All right, so I'm gonna do some drizzle. We're gonna use a wavy line. And it's very drizzly. And then I would like to, I think I'm gonna also put another strawberry on top. So I'm gonna use, do a curved bottom. Remember, you draw a light right in the middle. And then I'm gonna curve on the side and in and round the top and then curve on the other side. And you notice I don't make both sides exactly the same because often these shapes are not exactly the same on, on both sides. And I'm gonna maybe put some frosting on there. And then I could even do sort of a frosting swirl or a little swirl of frosting. So I could curve on maybe, you know, on the sides here. So I could curve the bottom and go up and around and in and to a point kind of like my strawberry and then up uh, in to the point. And I'm gonna add that sort of swirly pattern that some frosting swirls have, kind of like ice cream a little bit. And I could do that on both sides and maybe going around. So I'll do it on this side too. pattern and I can also put it here as well maybe it's going all the way around the edge I'm just gonna do them first and this is gonna overlap a little bit so I'm just gonna draw right over my drawing and then go back and erase and see now my swirls in front my strawberry with whipped cream is in back to show overlap patterns, the swirl patterns, and maybe also on this edge. And I'm going to have it overlap. The back of my cake makes it more realistic and feels like it's going back in space when I do that. There we go. It's looking very delicious. And most cakes have some kind of icing or something in the bottom edge just to kind of clean it up. So that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna just do some really simple icing right at the bottom. And I wanna show layers of cake in between instead of it being completely frosted. So I'm going to use a curved line. Remember, this is a three-dimensional cylinder. It is a round object. So any horizontal lines that go left and right are always going to curve around the shape. That is a tip about round forms, like cylinders, is they always curve, the horizontal lines always curve around the shape. Vertical lines tend to stay straight. So maybe this is some... Um, like whipped cream coming out of the center a little bit. I'll make the lines of my strawberry real quick. Maybe coming 
out. And, and maybe some strawberries coming out as well. I don't know, I'm making this very, maybe it's a strawberry chocolate drizzle cake. Mm. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a strawberry chocolate drizzle cake right now during this time, then it's a good time for baking. I have um, some brownie mix right now waiting to be uh, made. So, but I'm focusing on cakes right now. All right, so I'm done for now with my drawing, my basic drawing. Now, a couple other things. I'm gonna flip this paper over and I'm gonna talk about uh, making a multi-layer cake. So I'm gonna flip that over. Um, and then we'll come back, we'll flip it back over and we'll trace and we'll do color. Okay, so first off, doing a multi-layer cake is a lot of the same steps, at least starting out, but I want to make sure instead of filling the whole space with one cylinder, I'm going to leave enough space for multiple cylinders. So my top layer is going to be a much smaller cylinder and I'm going to make it nice and tall, but it's the same step. So oval bring down the sides. I might make the sides a little shorter so there's more space down below. Curve the bottom to close. And then for the second layer, I'm gonna do three layers. I'm gonna do another cylinder, just like we do with the plate. So you can mark, mark, and then go around, down, and back up. Bring down the sides. Again, I'm not gonna make it quite so long or deep curve the bottom to close. Then I'm going to mark, mark, and make one more layer. So starting with an oval, coming down, back up and around, bringing down the sides, and curving the bottom. And then I'm going to put that plate underneath. And I'm also gonna show you how to do a slice cut out. Um, in case you want to show that. So this time I'm going to start, I'm going to make a mark. Now if it's up here at the top, I would put the mark right in the middle of the cylinder, but I'm going to have the uh, slice cut out of this bottom half. So I'm going to make a mark right here. And I'm going to do two di diagonal lines going from one layer to the next. Kind of makes a triangle. And then I'm going to bring down two more vertical lines all the way down to the bottom where the plate sits. And then we're gonna do the inside of the slice. So I'm gonna add another triangle. So I'm gonna make a mark. I want these two lines to be right above each other. Vertical line, vertical line. And then draw a line connecting from one triangle to the next. And then do a little erasing. See, now it looks like it is being has a slice cut out of it. And also, if I want to show the layers of cake in inside this particular tier, uh, I'm going to do two diagonal lines going this way and another set of diagonals going that way. And maybe this is a chocolate layer in between, just like that. So you can kind of experiment with this. You could put um, some decorations on this. You could put some shapes, maybe some hearts. Maybe it's a love cake. You could put a cake topper, which is usually an object that sits on top of the cake. It might be letters or somebody's initials. Uh, wedding cakes often have a cake topper of the couple. It might be a, a bride and a groom. You don't have to do a wedding cake, but maybe it's a birthday cake where it says happy birthday. So um, lots of different ideas that you can come up with this. All right, I'm gonna flip this over. I'm going to do a little bit of tracing first. Now I am using black crayon to trace over my lines. It's gonna create a crayon resist line. Um, so when I paint, it kind of helps the watercolor uh, not bleed into other sections of my drawing. So when I'm painting one color and I'm painting another color next to it, it might not bleed into it or uh, mix or blend into it. So I'm gonna do quickly trace. Might speed this up for those who are watching or you can pause the video anytime you like and uh, until you are cut up, ca caught up to the same point where I'm at. Uh, if you want to skip a little bit, if you're already way past this point, you can.
And if you notice, I'm not drawing through anything that's overlapping and solid. I want to make sure that I show that overlapping. So I'm watching out for my whipped creams in the back edge of my cake because I do not want it to see look like a line is going through the little whipped creams because my whipped creams are not see-through. Uh, they are solid in color, so I want to make sure that it reads like it's solid in color. Same thing with my whipped cream. I'm going to draw the whipped cream first because it's in front and then I'm going to draw the strawberry because it's behind and I don't want to have to um, because I can't erase crayon I don't want to accidentally have crayon left and exposed same thing with this like layer of whipped cream that's coming out I'm going to do that first before I go back and do the rest of this top edge and now I'll do the top edge Go over these strawberries. Ooh, <laughs> that is looking delicious. All right, so now we're going to start by talking about color. Now, before you can just go right into painting, if you want to go right into painting and painting your background, painting your table, painting your cake, or you can get some crayons and you can put some patterns in using crayon lines, which will also create a resist to the watercolor, which I'll show you makes a really cool uh, texture. Uh, with the watercolor. Let's see. I am going to do lots of brown and chocolates and some reds. So my background, I'm going to use maybe some brighter crayons, maybe some yellow crayons. Now you can do any kind of pattern. If you remember, a pattern is a repeating lines, shapes, and colors, or a combination of those things. So I could do wavy lines. I could do zigzag lines if I want to do zigzag lines. I can do some kind of repeating shape. Maybe I am repeating triangles. I actually really like repeating triangles as a pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add that into my background. And the key to pattern making is not to randomly place lines, shapes, and colors, but to have an order to it. If there is no order to it, then it's not really a pattern. Um, it might be fun to do rainbow, but unless you repeat the rainbow colors all over and over and over, it's not going to be a pattern. It's just random rainbow colors. So just, just keep that in mind when you're thinking about patterns. Um, oftentimes, I know you have all kinds of ideas and you want to just use all of your ideas at once but sometimes we have to think about what would look best what would feel like um, it has uh, consistency and I have a saying sometimes less is more with design uh, that means sometimes just doing a little bit less not overdoing our colors not putting too many shapes Sometimes keeping it a little more simple makes a better design. Uh, when we have too much happening in our artwork, sometimes it's hard to even understand what we're seeing in the art. So just keep that in mind when you're making choices about color and patterns. Um, if there is a clean order to it, even with a lot of pattern and a lot of color, if there's an order to it, it tends to be more understandable and not feel so cluttered or confusing. So that is really important with art. We want it to be pleasing to the eye. We don't want it to be confusing to the eye. All right, I'm gonna do my bottom half. Maybe I'll do some um, orange uh, or some red. I like using brights with my, actually, I'm going to use a darker color so I can talk about when you're choosing, um, choosing colors, watercolor paints against your crayon. 
And also with crayon, you do want to press a little bit more because we're going to be painting over it with watercolor and we don't want the watercolor to cover up our crayon, which I'll explain in just a moment. I am doing some, I call these bump lines. This is actually called a scalloped line, but I call them bump lines. Bump, because bump, bump, see? Bump, 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 bump. Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> bump, bump, bump. It's always nice to put sound effects. Bump, bump, bump. There we go. Looking good. Now, if you want to take a white crayon and go over white frosting, you can do that, or you can just not paint it. Um, if you want to add some pattern, color patterns with crayon on your cake, you can. All right, I'm going to put that away. I'm going to actually bring out water and watercolor. All right, so one of the tips I wanted to give you, I want to talk about using watercolors. Uh, I do this a lot with my younger grade levels, but it's always a good reminder. First thing we want to do is, um, in order to get the paints, right now my, a lot of my paint colors are dry. So in order to get them uh, working and to, uh, to wake them up, we want to wake them up with some water. So I'm going to do my background. I always paint backgrounds first and then my object. So I have yellow triangles right now. Well, the thing about watercolor crayon resist designs is if you're using a bright color with the crayon line, you want to use a darker color on top of it, okay? Crayon is made with wax. Wax has oil in it. Watercolors are made with color and water. Oil and water do not mix. So when I wake up one of these colors, I'm gonna wake up this one right here because it's a sort of red purple. And I'm going to grab some water, add some water, dip it in. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm gonna wake it up. We are not digging into watercolor paints. We're using the tip of our brush and gently swish, swish, swish. Using that water, waking up that color, wake up color. And once it is wet, you see how it's nice and wet. It's very drippy. Um, we do. If your paint is thick and sticky, it is thirsty paint. That means you want to grab some more water and put some more water into it. If it is wet, like water, and really moves and drips, then you have a good watercolor consistency. All right, so I'm going to take this watercolor and I'm going to tap a little bit. It's very dark. If your paint is too dark, you can spread, which sometimes will help, but if it's too dark, clean your brush off. The wa more water you add, the lighter the color gets. So I'm gonna add some water, softening up the color, and oh my goodness. And remember what I said about oil and water do not mix? Well, our crayon has oil, our watercolor is made of water. They don't mix, that means they separate. That's what resist means. Uh, crayon resist means that the watercolor will resist from uh, mixing. So we are, I'm going to continue. I've got my paintbrush. We want to make sure we're using the tippy toes of our paintbrush. Remember, no booty scooting. Booty scooting is this. And sometimes we can damage our brush and damage our paper when we're doing watercolor. So I am going to, now, if your color is still too dark, remember, grab some water, use that water and soften that color and be careful about mixing I use the, that's why we're using the tippy toes of our brush we use the side of our brush if we have large areas and lots of paint to push so tippy toes for small areas like edges sides for large areas i'm gonna keep now i might not get this whole thing painted i'm gonna let you continue on your own i'm gonna stop here for now Man, that is a really fun pattern. I'm definitely probably going to finish it later on. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush. Remember, swish, swish, no tapping. That's where we splatter. Sometimes we want it, we can wipe, but oftentimes we need that paint water. Uh, we need that water to wake up our colors. Now my bottom half, because I'm using a darker color crayon, I want a lighter color, uh, a lighter watercolor. So I'm going to use maybe my, let's see, I'm gonna use my yellow because it's a nice bright color. Remember, take some water, wake it up, swish, 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 wake up paint. And then 
use it to paint. So see, if I were to use, let's say this magenta pink, it would probably blend into my lines. So I want something that is going to be a contrast color. That means dark colors next to light colors, light colors next to dark colors. All right, clean my brush. And then I'm gonna continue, once I'm done with this, I'm gonna continue painting. So maybe some brown chocolate, paint some brown chocolate. And just keep painting. Remember, you wanna paint around. If you want something to stay white, we just don't paint it. Our white is going to be our paper. Uh, we, if you notice, I have two empty spots here. I tend to rearrange all the watercolors for my students, and I often take out a couple colors that I choose. I don't really want them to use because they're really not necessary, and sometimes they can muddy up our picture. So if you need white, all you need to do is just go around the shape and leave it unpainted. All right. Um, for my plate, I'm also going to use another type of value. I'm going to use two values of a color. So maybe my plate is going to be mainly a lime green. Um, my lime green actually has a darker green to it. So I'm going to start with lime green. And I want the side of my plate to feel darker, like there's a shadow. So the top of my plate has more light on it. The side of my plate is going to feel like it has more shadow. So I'm going to grab the slightly darker green. Now, if you have blue, you might have a lighter blue or even a purple makes a good dark version of the blue. If it's orange, you can use darker orange or the yellow orange, or I could use ye yellow with the yellow orange for light and dark. So this one, I've got a, my regular color wheel green and I'm gonna put that on the side. I need a little more, I need to wake up my paint more. And what that does, by putting a little bit of a darker green on the side and a limeier green, which is a lighter green on the top, it kind of looks like light and dark. Oops. Another thing you could do is if you want to give your cake a little more texture, is you can go in and for instance, let's say I want to, mm, Put, make my cake layers like something like an orange. It's probably not the best for this chocolate cake, but that's okay. I'll go back and I'll add a little bit of brown to make it more chocolatey. Um, I could take a red or red orange, and while this is wet, I can take nice wet, a dark color, and do a little color drop. And when you do a wet color, on top of another wet color, it spreads and makes some really interesting texture. Ooh, that could be a really fun cake color. So you could experiment with your watercolors if you'd like. Um, you don't have to just paint them all solid. You could do this color drop technique. If you want, let's say for uh, to use one color and make it dark and light. Let's say you want this layer to be a darker, this darker yellow orange, but you want the other layer to be a slightly lighter yellow orange. You can put down a little bit of paint, clean your brush, take that clear water, and soften your color to make this one a slightly lighter value. So lots of different techniques. You can experiment, have fun with this, um, and create a really, really fun cake design. All right, guys, it's been fun. This is such a fun project. I hope you enjoy it, and I would love to see pictures. So if you get a chance, you know, take a picture, and you can send it to me. I would love to see it and maybe share it with my other friends. All right, guys, I hope you have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye.